Australia is spending a whopping 1 billion US dollars to fly drones over Antarctica. And it's all about science and conservation. Well, actually, it's about surveillance, but look at this map and you'll understand why. This is Antarctica. And it's more than just important to Australia because it lays claim to over 42% of this frozen continent. But you see, these five stations, these are Chinese research stations that China has poured millions of dollars into and these investments have only been growing. Because it's all about being a polar superpower these days. The entire world, particularly Australia, is eyeing China with a microscope. And Australia plans to do that, quite literally, from the skies, with the help of drones. From the previous episode on Australia, we learned that the country is massive and powerful, yet it has been struggling to fight off China's presence in the Oceania region. And now this fear has driven Australia to continue investing in resources in Antarctica to maintain dominance. To understand why, we have to understand Antarctica. So who owns it? Well, technically no one. There is no single country that owns the continent. Instead, Antarctica is internationally governed by something called the Antarctic Treaty System. Historically, this is one of the most unique and successful international partnerships. In a nutshell, the treaty addressed really a fundamental challenge facing Antarctica, which was how to manage the world's only continent without an indigenous human population. And the ultimate goal of this treaty was that no political or legal differences would interfere with science. It has certain objectives which ensure that Antarctica should be used only for peaceful purposes. This treaty was signed in 1959 by 12 countries and came into effect in 1961. Among the original signatories of the Antarctic Treaty, seven countries, including Australia, have territorial claims to parts of Antarctica. Today, this treaty has over 50 signatories, of which 28 are consultative parties with voting status. One of these signatories is an Asian power that Australia fears. And of course, it's China. This country is so far from home, yet so close at the same time. And today, its footprint in Australia's territory, in Antarctica, irritates Australia. For China, what started as an Antarctic expedition has now led to the country having four research stations in Antarctica, three of which are based in the Australian Arctic. And a fifth is under construction on Inexpressible Island in the Ross Sea. There are over 70 research stations in Antarctica owned by different countries, plenty of them even within Australian territory. China is just one of them, but why is that bothering Australia? That's because it's not all about investment, it's about intention. One of the things, of course, that the camp became incredibly useful for was effectively exhibiting that ownership. So very soon, for example, camps would have flagpoles. If you want to tell the wider world that the Antarctic actually belongs to you as opposed to anybody else, that kind of flag-waving performance became as important as the fundamental science. And currently, political leaders are unaware of China's exact intentions. This uncertainty is purely the reason why world leaders and experts are extremely skeptical about China's every move in the region. For instance, a report by the ASPI highlighted how the Chinese Communist Party's official English language newspaper, China Daily, deliberately misrepresented President Xi Jinping's words about Antarctica. In 2014, Xi had given a speech on China's polar agenda. The words, the Chinese side stands ready to continuously work with Australia and the international community to better understand, protect, and exploit Antarctica, was translated to China's continued interest in cooperating with Australia and other nations to know, protect, and explore Antarctica. When we think of Antarctica, let's also make sure we include the Southern Ocean, because a lot of this concern around resources really is about fishing. It's about making sure that China has access to the fishing resources of the Southern Ocean, and then that gets tied to the country's sense of food security. 
The report also elaborates China's point of view. It highlights how researchers from the Polar Research Institution of China estimated that there are 500 billion tons of oil and 300 to 500 billion tons of natural gas on the Antarctic continent plus a potential 135 billion tons of oil in the Southern Ocean. In fact, in 2009, the PRIC investigated Antarctic mineral resources and the legal status. It said, when all the world's resources have been depleted, Antarctica will be a global treasure house of resources. These people, man, like, what are you going to spend your money on? There'll be nothing to spend on a dead planet. Okay, compose myself. There is drones that we need to talk about. I want to talk about drones. Now, this raises eyebrows because there has been a separate protocol on environmental protection to the Antarctic Treaty since 1991. This protocol commits parties to the comprehensive protection of the Antarctic environment and designates Antarctica exclusively as a natural reserve devoted to peace and science. This means a ban on all commercial mineral activities, minimization of waste production, preventing marine pollution by setting limits on discharge from ships and more. And what you've seen more recently is the Chinese government being very clear that Antarctica could and should be seen as a strategic resource frontier, no different potentially from the oceans. So there's this very, very profound sense in which these are seen as spaces which China has a legitimate interest in that goes way beyond science. Okay, so everything that we've just looked at is what scares Australia. But for a country that lays claim to over 42% of Antarctica and has a strategic advantage in the region, Australia has severely underinvested in the continent. Meanwhile, China and even Russia to an extent are continuously taking efforts to expand their presence in the continent. And it also means that after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, there's going to be far more emphasis now on looking carefully about Russia's relationship with other international spaces. And that's the thing that worries the Antarctic Treaty System. We might see growing evidence of Russia and China simply not following the norms and rules associated with the Antarctic Treaty System. A threatened Australia began wondering, what if China ends up ignoring this territorial claim in Antarctica the same way that it did in the South China Sea? According to provisions, no country can claim new territory or demand expansion of existing claims to territory in Antarctica. But this isn't permanent. This is only while the present treaty is in force, which is until 2048. That's not even three decades away. Now that Australia has woken up to the geopolitical reality of the region, it has decided to invest over 2 billion US dollars. Australia launched an ambitious agenda for its future in Antarctica. As part of a 10 year funding plan, Australia aims to have eyes on Antarctica, and it plans to do this by increasing the country's ability to survey and monitor the frozen tundra region and surrounding open waters using drones, helicopters, and autonomous vehicles. The Australian Department of Defence has selected the Shebels S100 camcopter drone for the country's navy for 930 million US dollars. The mother of all drones. <laughs> the S100 flies at a maximum speed of 240 kilometers per hour and has a range of up to 200 kilometers. That's definitely giving me drone envy. So what's the connection between all of this? So because there's a reason why Australia is fearing particularly China's presence in the region. The connection say between this concern that countries like Australia might feel, I think is actually part of a, a wider strategic anxiety about China's role in the Asia Pacific region itself. One of the striking elements of Australia's relationship, particularly the Antarctic territory it claims as its own, is that there's been this sort of near constant concern that actually larger powers might, if you like, threaten the integrity of that relationship it thinks it has with Antarctica. When asked about China's intentions, ex-Prime Minister Scott Morrison simply said they don't share the same objectives as Australia as a treaty nation when it comes to protecting Antarctica. He went on to explain how the money Australia was investing will enable them to explore East Antarctica's islands where no country has been able to reach before. 
Premier coalition government period came to an end when the Australian citizens voted for Anthony Albanese and along with him a centre-left government. Upon being elected, the new Prime Minister mentioned that Australia's relationship with China uh, will remain a difficult one. Albanese met up with the leaders of the Quad, which is a quadrilateral security dialogue between Australia, India, Japan and the United States. There was a clear message that these states gave to China, which was that they will not tolerate any provocative or unilateral attempts to change the status quo in the region. At this point, we need to ask ourselves, will the Australian government take measures to maintain territory in Antarctica the way the previous government did? Because China's investment has gone beyond building research stations to building icebreakers and continental airstrips to provide year-round access. To counter this, the previous government even came up with a proposal to build a 2,700 meter concrete runway near one of its research stations in 2018. Yet it dropped the idea in 2021. Will it drop the idea of surveillance drones the same way? Australia's behavior will depend on China's behavior too. Where the connections are clear is that China will not allow itself to be marginalized in any of the world's spaces, particularly those spaces like the poles and the oceans, where ownership is either uncertain or whether ownership is shared. This solely has driven a lot of decisions that countries are taking with respect to Antarctica. Australia wanting to fly their drones is no different. This strategy by Australia will allow scientists to study new areas and also ensures it's active within its territory. Otherwise, Australia basically concedes influence to those that can. And more importantly, there's a reason why Australia is acting now and acting fast, because it doesn't have too long. The world's last great wilderness can't remain the same way forever. A provision of the treaty allows signatories to renegotiate purposes and principles in the Antarctic in 2048, potentially opening up the region for resource exploitation. And if this happens, we can't even imagine the repercussions of such actions. I think there's far greater appreciation that Antarctica is absolutely integral to planet Earth. But human beings, countries find a way, however absurd, to fight, to contest, to compete over all kinds of areas of Earth. And the polar regions, the oceans are no different. In less than three decades from now, signatories of the treaty will get to rewrite Antarctica's fate. And those words are highly dependent on our actions today.